Good afternoon, fellow watch fans. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Um, previously, I did an unboxing of the Steinhardt Ocean One Vintage Red 39. And uh, today I thought I would get into a bit more detail about this watch. Do a little bit of a mini review, if you will. I'll try not to go on too long about it, but... Uh, yeah, I've had it for a week and a half or two weeks or something like that. I've worn it almost every day. It's been uh, on my wrist a lot. And uh, so uh, I have some thoughts. Um, first of all, what am I wearing? What watch am I wearing today? Today I'm wearing my Hamilton Pan Europe with a nice vintage racing strap from B&R Straps. So there you have it. Um, first, a little bit of... A rant. Forgive me if I uh, go on a little bit too long about this, but I have some thoughts. So this is clearly, obviously, an homage watch. There's no denying it. There's no doubt about it. It is obviously a reference to the uh, Rolex uh, Sea Dweller 1665, which was, I believe, uh, produced in the 60s. Um, and Steinhardt is not pretending that it is not. Um, they're not, uh, you know, trying to uh, insinuate or imply that they have designed this watch from scratch. It obviously is an homage, and uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, for the reasons that I'm about to talk about. First of all, um, I'm actually looking at this watch on Chrono 24 on my laptop here, and it is uh, uh, a very nice example of the Rolex Sea Dweller 1665, and it's selling for $78,000. There's very few of these. They are incredibly expensive. I'm never going to own this watch, the real thing. Um, let alone any Rolex of any kind. And not simply because I don't want to pay $10,000 for a watch, if I could even get a Submariner for $10,000, which I could not. If I walked into an AD right now and said, I'd like a Submariner, please, they would laugh at me. They would ask, uh, ask me how many uh, previous Rolexes I had purchased from them or spent. They call this a quote unquote, previous spend, which um, allows them to prefer particular customers, um, pay to play, if you will. Um, they would then say, oh, we'll, we'll put you on a waiting list. I might spend five years on a waiting list. I may never see that watch. Um, they purposefully limit supply to increase demand, to increase exclusivity, uh, to make it an elitist watch. Um, that's not why I like watches. So, um, I'm happy to purchase a watch from Steinhardt, who, the fellow who started this company, was a former German engineer who decided that he thought people should be able to enjoy high quality watches at an affordable price and that people might like to have a bit of a taste of the appearance of some of these classic dive watches. And so that's the, uh, that's the impetus behind their company. And um, I think that's great. That's just my personal opinion, though. Watch media uh, are, can be, tend to be quite snobbish about all of this. Uh, the watch industry, they will say, oh, you should just buy the watch that you like. Buy what you like. That's, what, that's what's the main thing. You're the one looking at your wrist. You should buy the watch that you like. Oh, unless it's an homage to a Rolex. Then, you know, we don't think that's acceptable. You are sort of a lower collector, if you will. Uh, you should have higher standards. Um, some have even said in you know, the same conversation, uh, don't buy a Rolex homage. I would never do that personally. Oh, but there's this company over here that does straight ripoffs of um, classic military style watches, literally just aping them uh, completely. And those are fine. And so, you know, there's a lot of hypocrisy there's a lot of elitism. Um, I don't know if they're pandering to brands because they need access, um, but I find it fairly annoying. So anyway, I really do say buy what you like. If you like a watch, get it. You're the one wearing it. You're the one paying for it. Uh, nobody's going to look down and say, oh, what a great watch you have on there. Um, trust me, I have experienced that. Nobody cares what watch I'm wearing. I'm probably quite annoying. And I say, hey, you guys see my new watch? What do you think of my watch? And I'm much more excited about it than they are. So, and as it should be, I'm the one who's wearing it. So anyway, that's enough about that. 
Um, yeah, so I'm going to pull the watch out here, have a bit more of a look at it. As I said, I've been wearing it almost every day since I have purchased this watch. Uh, it is keeping fantastic time. Uh, I think it's still within, amazingly enough, around five seconds a day, which is crazy. Uh, it has the Salita SW200 Elaboré movement, which is not COSC certified by any stretch, but it is a step up from their standard movement. It's a Swiss movement, um, basically uh, similar to the ETA movements that you can buy through the Swatch Group. Um, Salita, or yeah, sorry, Salita is uh, also an, a Swiss movement company that produces them for various Swiss, Swiss watch companies. Uh, it has a very nice signed crown there. Uh, if you can see, um, it has a really interesting domed crystal, which I really like. Uh, it gives you some really nice looks. I have put this under the loop and looked at the finishing and the finishing is really quite impressive. I'm really impressed with that. Um, so yes, this may be an homage watch, um, but it is an extremely high quality watch for a really good price. Um, I'm just going to take it off the cushion here. For a second, the bracelet is very comfortable, easy to get a really good size on it. Uh, it has a lot of micro adjustments, as you can see. Um, it's a substantial solid, solid link bracelet, solid end links, um, lays nice and flat on your wrist. I know a lot of people have talked about the straight lugs of the Steinhardt watches, and it's true, they are fairly straight. A lot of uh, brands have a bit more of a curve to them. But because this is a 39 millimeter watch, it actually sits really flat on my wrist anyway. I have approximately a seven and a quarter inch wrist and it fits really, really well. Um, what else can I say about this watch? Maybe I'll put it on the wrist and let you see how it fits. So there you can see, really nice size for my wrist, good profile. There you can see how it sits really nice and flat, doesn't overhang, bracelet is very comfortable. Yeah, quite happy with this, quite happy indeed, 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 indeed. So um, yeah, there it is. Um, again, I apologize if the majority of this video is taken up with my little soliloquy to start, but, um, I don't know. I think that's an important topic and, uh, people should relax. It's just a watch. It's just a freaking watch. Seriously. If you like it, buy it, wear it, enjoy it. It's yours. There you go. Isn't that nice? It's very, very nice. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.